from your mother. What a bill. <laughs> Why don't you open the post in the evening, darling? After we've had a drink or two. <laughs> Louise, mm -hmm. can we make a contribution for distressed gentlefolk? <laughs> they must be joking. That's what we are. Oh, here's one from my publisher. Well, don't open it. Why not? Perhaps the novel's taken off after all. Well? Um, publisher's figures for the last six months. Let's see. I still haven't done my advance. Never mind, darling. I just don't understand it. The reviews are good here and in America, and yet we're just about broke. Well, it's probably way over people's heads. Oh, I'd aimed it somewhat lower. Then it's before its time. First novels often are. I should never have left the Foreign Office. Security, bowler hat, umbrella. Hmm. A portrait of the unsuccessful author as a young man. Change your photographer. Don't answer that. It's the bank. Not at nine o'clock in the morning. Two six nine two. Yes, sir, Stroke. No. Yes, he is. Well, Who is that, please? Yes, would you hold on a minute? It's for you, uh, Susan Mandeville. Susan Mandeville? Mm -hmm. She's married to Mark Mandeville, the big film producer. Then you'd better speak to her. Hey, maybe it's about the book. Hello? Mr. Medway? Yes? Hi, this is Susan Mandeville. <laughs> I don't suppose you know me from Adam. As a matter of fact, I do know who you are. Oh, great. Then we can take a giant step forward. I just rang to tell you how much I enjoyed reading your novel. Really? Well, that's very good news. And I was wondering if you'd, um, well, if you'd care to take me to lunch one day. Oh, yes, of course, Mrs. Mandeville. I would ask you, but I know how gallant you Englishmen are. <laughs> you'd <laughs> insist on paying. Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. You see? How does Monday look? Oh, um, yes, Monday's fine. Do you like blundles? Blundles? Yes, of course. 115? Blundles, 115. Great. Thank you. See you then. <laughs> sure. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, she likes the book. Do you think her husband wants to make a film of it? Well, I've heard he never makes a film without her approval. Lunch at Blundell's a bit expensive. We'll manage. <laughs> hey, it'll be worth it. Just one moment, Mr. Medway. Marvellous, all this modern technology. Yes, sir. It saves a great amount of trouble. Ah, I don't have £40 in my account. I'm afraid not, Mr. Medway. OK, let's be bold. Of this total, I shall draw £37. How is Mrs. Medway? Oh, any minute now. What are you hoping for, a boy or a girl? I don't even mind, really. I mean, there's not so much difference to begin with, is there? Um, she won't be wanting to cash a cheque this afternoon, will she? Wouldn't think so. Why? Because after I've cashed this one, the balance of your joint account will be exactly 63p. A gentleman always keeps his account in credit. I'm sure our manager would appreciate that, Mr. Medway. <laughs> I'm meeting Mrs. Mandeville. I believe she reserved the table. Indeed, she has. Sir. Would you care for a drink at the bar first? Or go straight to the table, perhaps? Uh, to the table, I think. I never drink at lunchtime. It's very wise, sir. May I take your coat? Thank you. Mineral water while you're waiting, sir? Thank you. With ice and lemon? Very refreshing. Yes, indeed. 
An aqua minerale con limoni e ghiaccio. Okay. Perciò che tu sia meglio, sir. Oh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Grapefruit salad, 175. Pot. Roast beef, £7.80. Captive answer. A bit later, perhaps. Very good, sir. Oh, sir, table nine just asked me for tea. Do you have any? How many times do I have to tell you I've got you? Si, you're a man, baby. Hello, Ronaldo, how are you? Nice to see you again. I've found your guests as they are. Would you like to come through? Medway? Yes. Hi, I'm Susan Mandeville. It's so nice to meet you. I'm very pleased to meet you. Gosh, am I late? No, no. I was early. You English have the loveliest manners. Ah, yeah. mm. oh, Ronaldo. <laughs> Thank you. Buongiorno, signora Mandeville. Buongiorno. Your usual, signora. Si, Carlo. Champagne cocktail. Now, I'm going to call you Tony, okay? Please do. And you must call me Susan. Susan. The menu, signora Mandeville. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, what's on the trolley, Ronaldo? Roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Oh, no, no, it's too much. I'll just look at the menu. Thank you, signora. Thank you, sir. I'm on a new diet. Oh, good. I mean, uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm on a diet myself. Oh, come on, you're kidding. You're as skinny as a bean pole. <laughs> Want to keep it that way? I'm going to try the chef's salad. It's very good here. As you recommend it, that's what I'll have. Mm. Hope you didn't think I'd gone crazy telephoning you like that. No, of course not. I'm very glad that you like the book. I do, very much indeed. I'm flattered. I've always heard that you're an excellent judge of writing. Oh, thank you. Particularly of novels that would make successful films. Mm. I did have quite a reputation for that. Mind you, some of the novels I like wouldn't make very successful films. In which category would you place mine? Yours? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I think you're... You're ready to order, Signora Mandeville. Now, you mustn't laugh, Ronaldo, but we're both on very strict diets. That is because it is Monday, madame. Most of our guests are on a new diet on Monday. Mrs. Sopet has just ordered a slice of cold ham. Two girls. But on Wednesday, she will be back for the special Wednesday trolley. What's that? You know, Signora Mandeville? Steak and kidney pudding. Oh, yum. Mm. <laughs> have you decided? Yes. I'll have two tiny lamb cutlets with no fat. Very good, madam. On the pink side? Mm, on the pink side. And the side salad? Yes, a little one. And to start with, some smoked salmon, perhaps? Lola, you know I shouldn't. Just a sliver? Just a sliver. Thank you, madam. And you, sir? Just the chef's salad. Nothing to start with. Nothing? My diet, you see. Of course. Signore. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can I say something funny? Oh, no. Of course not. It's just that sitting here in a restaurant with a clever young writer Reminds me of something that happened in Los Angeles years ago. In Hollywood? Hmm. Have you been there? No, no, no. I've always wanted to go. Aha! Another film buff. <laughs> yes. Oh, those old movies. I know. Aren't they great? They're so fast, they're funny, easy to follow. Romantic. Mm. Thank you, Mila. Did you watch The African Queen the other night? Yes, yes. Marvellous. Mm. A, a Bogart and Bacall. Bogart and Hepburn. Oh, Lord, yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> 
Don't you think that in my book... Some wine with your meal, sir. Susan? I don't suppose I should, but my new diet. Senior. Maybe just a little. A Sancerre 78, perhaps. Perfect. Well, not for me, but perhaps a half bottle? I'm sorry, sir. There are no half bottles. Very well. A bottle. Sir. Anyway, this young writer, thank you, had invited me to lunch. And I'd ordered a plank steak, baked potato with sour cream and chives. You see, I wasn't on a diet then. French beans, cauliflower. Oh, and I started with a dozen Blue Point oysters and had a chocolate souffle for dessert. What we used to call in Tudor times a groaning board. Mm. Then the waiter brought the check and uh, this young Don't man... tell me he didn't have enough money to pay the bill with. I mean, with which to pay the bill. Exactly. It was Here we very are, embarrassing. Ooh, that looks great. Some black pepper, madam. Please. Can't I tempt you? Sorry? Just a thimbleful? Well. Could we have another glass, Carlo? Si, signora. Mm, lovely. So, what happened? Well, when I'd assessed the situation, I made the excuse of going to the little girl's room. I got hold of the manager, and he solved the problem like that. How? Oh. He came up to the table and he said to this fellow with a perfectly straight face that on Friday, lunch was on the house for everyone whose last name began with the letter F. Well, it couldn't have been Frederick Forsyth. Oh, good heavens, no. He's never needed a free lunch, has he? No, no, it was Donald Fairweather. Oh. F for Friday, see? Today's Monday. I'm Medway. <laughs> the point is, but from that day on, Donald Fairweather has never looked back. He's had one bestseller after another. Indeed. Mm. Mm. I've seen this done on old British films. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mustn't make me laugh. Why not? Well, a woman never forgets a man who's made her laugh. Oh? Well, that can't be bad. Your health. Mm. Sontag. Let's talk about your book. Yes, let's. Is it really your first novel? Yes. It's amazing. Your understanding of women is quite remarkable. <laughs> You're married, of course. Yes. Children? Our first is very much on the way. Oh, how nice. Did she, uh... Did she mind you having lunch with me today? Oh, good heavens, no. I mean, she understands business lunches. Tell me, did you find it visual? I mean, when, when you read it, did it, uh, what's the expression, jump off the page? Parts of it did, yes. Which parts, in particular? I thought the confrontations between Michael and his mistress were excellent. Those bitter stand-up battles. My God, how one understands them. Excuse me, Mrs. Mark. Thank you. But the thing I really admire about your writing is your command Excuse of la me, Your command of language. It's very gripping. Thank you. And what about characterization? Mm -hmm. Do you think the part of Grace is a good acting role? And the minister, for that matter. Excuse me, madam. What would you like in your salad? Oh, uh, could I have some red cabbage, some cucumbers, and uh, mushrooms, please? The part of the minister might be. Anything else, madam? I, uh, yes, uh, artichoke hearts and tomatoes. And Grace is certainly not on the side of the angels. Surely that's a plus. Any that dressing, madam? On, uh, yes, French dressing, please. Susan! Really My God. I guess you didn't hear me. Show me, Mrs. Littmar, to number five. Table by the window. Oh, Ronaldo, you remember it. Madame. Sir. Howdy. Susan, honey. Melanie, hi. Why, I heard you were back in the old country. Yes, I finally made it. And how's Peter? Oh, he's just fine. Oh, we were so pleased to hear your news. Thank you. Well, hello there. Mm. Um, Tony, this is Melanie Litmayer. Melanie Anthony Medway. How do you do? Hi, honey. Hello. 
Hi. Tony's a writer. We were just discussing his new novel. Why, Susan Mandeville, you're still collecting clever young authors. Oh, what a charming way of putting it, Melanie. <laughs> What's it called, honey? Uh, the novel, uh, Angels and Ministers of Grace. Ministers of Grace? Well, what on earth does that mean? Well, you see, the heroine's name is Grace, and she's married to a minister. Ah, oh, you mean she's married to a clergyman? <laughs> no, no, the other sort, uh, political. You oh. really ought to read it, Melanie. I think you'd uh, both enjoy it. Now you sit down and get on with your drink. Now you tell me all about it. Is it sexy? Enough for you. Well, not really sexy. No, not in that sense of the word. Well, in what sense of the word, then? Well, I mean to say there's no gratuitous sex or violence. It's on a higher level, Melanie. I'm not sure you'd understand it. What? No contorted bodies? No groans? Hey, doesn't anybody beat up what, what's her name, Grace? <laughs> there is a certain amount of that, yes. How much? What? The violence, the price, or the sex? Why, the price, honey. Eight pounds, 95. Okay, I'll buy it. My Bruce is away this weekend. Oh. Oh, Sean, this is Susan Mandeville. She and I are very old friends. Hi, Susan. Hello. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank well, you. goodbye, Mr. Mr. Uh, Medway. I really do look forward to reading your book. Mind you, if Susan likes it, you will be made. Uh, Susan has such very good taste. Bye, honey. Bye. Come on, Sean, I'm starved. I do hope you meet again. What a character. Yes. Is she in the film business? Oh, good heavens, no. No, she's married to a cattle ranch in Texas. Oh, not him. Bruce. That's where all the money is nowadays. <laughs> Are you working on anything at the moment? Your salad, madam. Thank you. Well, it's a sort of um, action novel, really. Very little dialogue, full of action. <laughs> Something, you know, funny, fast, easy to follow. I wouldn't have thought that was your style. Excuse me, Mrs. Mandeville. It still seems a very popular format. And a chef's salad. I know, but uh, that should never be a writer's main consideration, now, should it? The first rule in this business is to do what you do best. After all, there's only one Hitchcock. Oh, true. But with a carefully constructed plot. Oh, look, they've given me four cutlets. <laughs> They're very small. My poor diet. To get back to my book. Would you like some red wine with your lamb, Signora? Mmm, lovely. A small carafe of house red, please. All right. Sure. Yes. Tell me, what, what sort of a deal does one get from selling a book to a film company? That depends. On what? On whether it's a bestseller or just a good book. If it's a bestseller, sir? About 250,000. As much as that. Oh, and more. Someone like Harold Robbins gets the earth before he puts pen to paper. Mm. And um, for one like mine, say, what could I expect to be offered? The reviews are good. I think with a good agent, you might... Hi. Oh, Tony, I know it's rude, but I really must say hello. Will you forgive me? Of course. I'll be right back. Everything all right, signore? Perfect. But you saved me a palm supreme, Ronaldo. Oh, madame, I'm afraid. None there? Alas. Never mind. Better without. But I will check for you. Hello. Hello. How
In luck, Signora, the last one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Make a note. I have now abandoned my new diet. Coffee, madame? Not for me. This is plenty. Sir? Uh, no, thank you. Keeps me awake all afternoon. <laughs> Brandy, perhaps? Uh, no, thank you. Cigar? Just the bill, please. Delicious. Bill for table 15. So gooey. <laughs> What's up? Oh, no, thank you. What are you staring at? your table 4. Sorry, sir. Wasn't that uh, Stephanie Lang that you spoke to? Do you know her? No, 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 no. Oh, that super biography she wrote of Neil Gwynn. Mm. Thank you, sir. I think they made a film of it. They did, a very successful one. I believe a, a Mark Mandeville production. That's right. It's delicious. I've decided to put myself out of suspense. Mm, sounds serious. In your honest opinion, do you think Mr. Mandeville would be interested in filming my book? Well, frankly, I don't know, Tony. Uh, why don't you ask him? He's still that way. Yes? Telephone. For me? Yes, sir. Excuse me. Everything to your satisfaction, madam. Mm. Hello? Tony, it's me. Something wrong? Listen, I hope I'm not too late. I'm going to the hospital. You're what? No, not really. But if you told her that, then you'd have to leave without paying the bill. Ah, uh, um... Why are you mumbling like that? <laughs> Louise, darling, you remember our honeymoon? Yes, of course I do. You remember our lovely little restaurant? Yes, where they brought the phone at the... table? Exactly. Oh, so she's sitting right next to you? Yes. And you've already paid the bill? Yes, darling. <sighs> Sorry, darling. Oh, well. Love to all. Bye. That was my wife. Something wrong? No, no, no. She forgot to tell me we're going to some literary do tonight. Well, I, uh... Tony, there's something I've got to ask you, and uh, I don't know quite how to begin. What is it? Did you base your character of Michael on my ex-husband? I beg your pardon? On Mark. Oh, come on, you must have. On Mark Mandeville, yes. your ex-husband? Hadn't you heard? Oh, Mark and I have been divorced for over two years. No, I... I thought somebody ought to warn you. What do you mean, warn you? Well, Mark hates that kind of caricature, and I think he might sue you. Sue me? Susan? There you are. Where have you been? Monday. Haircut. I forgot. I want you to meet Tony Medway. Tony, this is Peter, my fiance. Hello, Tony. Susan's been raving about your book. Oh, great. She has the darndest nose for talent. If she thinks you're good, you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, you're not by any chance a film producer. <laughs> not me. Uh, I'm in the restaurant business. I'm sorry. I should have told you. This is Peter Blundell. He owns this place. That's why she comes here. She likes to keep it in the family. <laughs> Did you enjoy your lunch? Oh, yes. Yes, very much. Now I'm about to become the wife of a boring old restaurateur. So you've left the film business for good? I'm afraid so. I don't mind one bit. Congratulations. Oh, goodbye, Tony. Bye. And good luck with the book. Thank you. Tony, it's been just wonderful meeting you. And remember, if you go on writing from your heart, you'll be a happy man. Thank you. Bye. Oh, thank you for the lunch. Don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs>